Okay. Good evening. And thank you for your attendance and participation in the first ever virtual Rock Hall campaign for the upcoming election scheduled on Saturday, May 1st. My name is Suzanne Einstein, and I am the president of the Greater Rock Hall Business Association. We are a nonprofit organization of approximately 70 members dedicated to promoting business in Rock Hall. Our to advertise, advocate, educate, and serve as a representative for our member businesses, and we support community events and activities that contribute to the success of our membership. Our organization is once again honored to co-sponsor this event tonight with the League of Women Voters of Kent County. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the co-president of the League, Marion Herr. Welcome and thank you all for coming to our forum for the Rock Hall Town Council candidates. The League of Women Voters envisions a democracy where every single person has the desire, the right, the knowledge, and the confidence to participate. And we work hard to assist citizens to become educated, active and involved in public policy decisions, as well as the democratic process. We congratulate and thank all the candidates here today for their willingness to take part in our democracy. And we appreciate the time and energy they've expended to work for the betterment of our community. The League is proud to be nonpartisan, neither supporting nor opposing candidates or political parties at any level of government, but always working on vital issues of concern to our members and the public. And now I'd like to introduce our forum moderator, Lynn Dolinger. Thank you. Um, welcome to the world of Zoom for the candidate forum for the Rock Hall Town Council seats. There are six candidates for the council seats, all of whom should be appearing on your screen. At this time, I'd like to introduce the candidates. Please raise your hand when I call your name. David Jones, Kim Edwards, Walter Elburn, Dave Main, Brian Jones, and James Cook. Welcome. Each candidate will now be given two minutes to make an opening statement, and at the end, they will be able to make closing statements. The starting order was previously determined by lot, but I will attempt to rotate the order as the evening proceeds. The first two questions were given to the candidates over a week ago so that they could carefully consider their answers. I will repeat the questions for each candidate if requested to do so. However, please be advised that this is not a debate and candidates cannot interrupt the answer of another candidate. The timing will be automatic and will appear on the screen. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer each question. Time will start at two minutes on your screen and count down to zero. When the zero appears on the screen with a beep, I will allow a candidate to complete a sentence, but will require stopping at that point at which time the microphone will be muted. Once the prepared questions have been answered by each candidate, time permitting questions will be taken from the audience with the forum scheduled to end at 8.30. All candidates will have the opportunity to respond to any question that is presented. 
Please submit your questions by using the Q&A button on your screen. These questions will be screened by our reviewers to eliminate duplications, those determined to be personally inappropriate, or any that are not germane to the Office of Town Councilman. We will end the forum with, with two minute closing statements from each one of the candidates. If there are no further questions, at this time, I would like to present the first question to, uh, to David Jones. You will have two minutes to answer this question. Opening statement. Yeah. Excuse me. My mm -hmm. error. Here we go. <laughs> I yeah. forgot to give you guys a chance to do your opening statement. So let's back up the truck here and we will start with opening statements. And I will start with David Jones. Right, bear with us, folks. We here we go. Um, we seem to have lost David Jones' uh, video, and so we're going to go on and with the with the remaining candidates and let you do opening statements. And if we get David uh, Jones back on, then we will have him at the end. The timer has malfunctioned. Okay. And therefore, we will. We have a timer in the room, and we will have to just announce. Um, when the two minutes is up. Okay, I don't know if you overheard that, folks. But I, I did the timer out. <laughs> once again, here we go. The timer is not, is malfunctioning, so it's not on the screen anymore. Maybe that's a kind of okay. We don't have to worry about that, but we still do want to keep our comments to two minutes. So let us start then with Tim Edwards. Mm. Two minutes opening statements. Go ahead, Tim. Hi, my name's Tim Edwards. Uh, I've been on the council for four years. I retired from the town and went right on the council. Um, I worked for the town for almost 30 years. I am very, very familiar with the infrastructure of this town. I had it for a long while. I know we need to replace it, but it takes time. That's one of the things that I learned on the council is nothing happens overnight. Um, our water plant needs to be rebuilt. Our sewer plant needs to be rebuilt. Our infrastructure has to be rebuilt. If we're going to keep on bringing all these people to Rock Hole, because if not, we're, we can't handle it. And we know we have money problems. We're hoping we can fix those. And that's all I have to say right now. Thank you very much, Tim. Let's move on to Walter Elburn. Hey, you know, my name is Walter Elburn. And I, uh, I'm proud to be you know, running for council for this town. I am of this town. And I lived here most of my life, raised six children, all of whom which are successful. Um, I got my plumbing license under Butch Price in 92. I went on to Washington to go ahead and <clears throat> be a superintendent at the World Bank and I ran the DC division. I got knowledge enough to go ahead and rebuild these plants so you'd save money. That was the type of work that I did. The people of this town 
they need a little bit of a break. They don't need to be taxed. The elderly people here, the retired people here, the people in general, they don't need to have to dig in their pockets anymore. We're sending money in directions that we may be able to be gathered back. And if I got to, I'll be glad to go knock on the governor's door. Worst he can say is no. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure where to, where I'm at on the clock. <laughs> so, uh, the knowledge of my of the infrastructure in this town is that when I was a plumber in the '80s in this town, I've had the water meters come off in my hand, so I know exactly what Mr. Edwards is saying. He is absolutely right. We got to find the money somewheres. And we can't give up on the people and expect the people to just keep dishing out money every time we turn around. It's not, it's not exactly fair for us to have to take their money and give it to somewhere else in the part of the town or even the state of Maryland when we have our own needs here. And I think there's ways that we can go knock on the door. The governor today talked about it. Thank you, Mr. Elburn, very much. I was close on the ringer. <laughs> well, you, I was as surprised as you were, folks. So we're going to keep moving on. <laughs> Round two. I'd like, I'd like to ask uh, Dave, David Main next to uh, uh, offer his opening statement. My name is David Main, going by Dave. Uh, I'm a candidate for Rock Hall Town Council in the upcoming May election. My wife, Laura, and I have resided in the Harbor Woods development in Rock Hall for just over seven years. Prior to that, we spent many years between Wilmington, Delaware, and our cottage on Spring Cove. I believe the council is a place to serve our citizens and to create positive impacts on the issues and concerns that matter to us all. As a council member, I'll be a creative and productive voice for everyone in our community the goal of achieving positive outcomes that benefit us all. My approach to the council will be to apply work ethic and creative problem solving skills that I have earned over my personal and professional career. Along with current service uh, on the planning and zoning board, I've served in many managerial functions throughout my career, including tenure as the vice president and president of a 400 plus seat HOA or homeowners association and most recently as the Assistant Vice President and Technical Operations Manager for a regional bank. Uh, my priority on the council will be sound, financially responsible government, the focus on transparency, honesty, and above all, respect for the townspeople we serve. I'd like to get to work on day one by soliciting feedback from you on the goal of understanding the concerns that are important to you. We all know about the infrastructure problems. There are a lot of other concerns for our townspeople. Uh, as a member of the community, coupled with my years of experience in problem solving, along with my ability to influence policy and change in both the personal and business settings, I'm asking for your support when you vote this May. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, now I'd like to hear from uh, Brian Jones for his opening statements. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Jones, and I'm a candidate for the Office of Council Member for the Town of Rock Hall in the May 1st, 2021 election. I'm 37 years old, lifelong residence, uh, resident of Rock Hall. I spent 17 years in the public education field. I have a, a degree in computer information management. I worked as a lead technology technician for Kent County Public Schools. I worked one year as a planning specialist for the Kent County government. And I currently work for an IT firm um, that has me working closely with the state Maryland Department of Health in setting up the IT infrastructure for mass vaccination sites. Um, I'm humbled and honored to have served as a council member and mayor from 2011 to 2019. In addition to my elected positions, I've served uh, my community in numerous capacities, volunteer capacities, uh, past president of the Rock Hall Volunteer Fire Company, uh, board of director. Um, also, I was a member of the Rock Hall Parks and Recreation Board and a past member of the Rock Hall Lions Club. So I found uh, serving my community as an active participant very rewarding. Uh, my decision to run for the Rock Hall Town Council again was motivated by the desire to utilize my skills, knowledge, 
and several years of municipal government experience. I do believe I can make a positive impact on the community where I live, support, and believe in. I bring to the table an unparalleled vision defined by a youthful perspective. My first goal is to preserve and maintain our way of life and our beautiful community. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brian Jones. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to invite James Cook to offer his opening statement. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in and joining the Candidates Forum. Uh, my name is James Cook. Um, I'm a 15 year resident of Kent County. Um, I live in Rock Hall and I love living here. And I think that's really why I threw my hat in the ring, so to speak, because I do honestly believe that the town faces many challenges. But I think I'm somebody that brings a little bit from my professional experience, a little bit of experience that could help the town move forward, especially with infrastructure projects. I work um, at an engineering firm, a civil engineering firm, and we do a lot with um, municipal, uh, you know, uh, municipal projects, dealing with wastewater, water, water mains, just the entire infrastructure system. I've worked with many towns, Hebron, Vienna, Federalsburg, uh, Talbot County overall, um, Easton, to not only secure the funding, um, but also, you know, not increase the debt load on the individuals and the residents within those communities. There's a lot of grant funding out there. There's a lot of um, subsidized funding that we can get from you know, uh, local, state, and federal uh, organizations such as USDA. Um, you know, they have a great program, RD Apply, which is specifically for rural communities, um, housing and urban development, um, MDE. There's a lot of funding out there. We just really need to know how to navigate these, um, these uh, large bureaucracies in order to get what we need and bring it back to our communities here. And that's something I do every day. That's something I've done for many communities, as I've mentioned. And I really want to bring that experience to Rock Hall, where I live, and I want to stay. And uh, I really want to bring that experience and help the town move forward, especially in that direction. On top of that, I'm a young professional. To be honest with you, I'm 29 years old, but I love living here. And we need to be able to ensure that people my age uh, perpetuate our community and stay here and work here and live here and love to be here. And that's why I would like to bring my youthful and professional experience uh, to the town council. Thank you very much, Mr. Cook. Um, and now, we will actually get to the questions that you, uh, the candidates were given previously. Did you get David Jones? Did you get Apparently him Apparently not. Apparently not. I'm sorry yeah. to say. So if he does get back on, we'll, we'll bring him in as we can. But for now, we are going to go ahead and move on to the two questions that you were previously given. All the candidates were given these these questions over a week ago. And um, so I will repeat the questions if you need them repeated. Otherwise, we will just move on through the list of the, the order of candidates. Um, and you will be given two minutes again to answer each question. And we're not going to rely on the timer at this point, um, but I think that you will still be able to keep to the two minutes as much as you can and um, we will let you know if you've gone over, okay? Um, the first question that we're going to provide is, Town of Rock Hall faces a complex budgeting process with limited funds to pay for its needed water, sewer, and other infrastructure improvements. What is your position and on raising real estate taxes and utility rates to help pay for these. If opposed to this as a remedy, how would you propose paying for the improvements which cannot be financed through outside sourced grants? I would like this question to start with Dave Bain. Thanks for the question. Um, you know, I gave a lot of thought to this and I've given a lot of thought to this as it moves forward. Um, and while no one likes the idea of raising taxes, there comes a time when the reality of the situation requires difficult choices. The current administration has done a magnificent job of realigning our financial structure with our creditors, which was in danger. However, the reality of the situation, again, we find ourselves in demands additional funding from those of us who live here. 
in addition to raising taxes with an estimated $40 million potential debt load, of which perhaps half of which we can offset with assistance programs, we can't possibly cover the debt load without a tax increase. Tax increase alone is not a solution. Solving the problem is gonna require some additional solutions for income. Um, some of that's only a theory right now. Anne annexation of property might be one possibility. A property transfer tax, which I've seen floating around on the internet is another. Um, we need to prove to our creditors that we can service the potential long-term debt that we are going to face. That's not a question. Um, I don't believe that these are the only solutions and I feel we should be soliciting further ideas from the very smart people that live in this town. There are a lot of retired professionals that have a wealth of knowledge for us. Like most of us sitting here, we and they will have to shoulder the burden of the financial stability needed to facilitate our required improvements. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Main. Uh, that question now, we'll move on to uh, Brian Jones. Thank you. Um, so obviously raising real estate taxes is, is something that no one wants to see. Um, however, it's inevitable that eventually taxes will have to be raised, um, and especially to fund uh, infrastructure improvements. Um, that's just, that's, that's the town's greatest revenue stream, uh, real estate taxes. Um, I was able to have balanced budgets uh, when I was mayor for four years. Uh, we didn't need a um, tax increase. Um, towards the end of the term, uh, we realized that there may be a tax increase, you know, on the table as far as funding infrastructure programs, but uh, projects. But we we took took a look at Catholic Avenue where we replaced a complete water main, and we completely we did that mostly with grant funding um, and government programs. So there are other creative solutions. Um, rather than just going out there and raising real estate taxes just because you can. Um, so you have to be creative, uh, look at all the options on the table, uh, seek guidance and resources from other state and local governments, um, programs, and also uh, use resources, state resources like the Maryland Municipal League. Um, they're there for us um, for guidance, as well as other uh, federal local, state, government resources. Um, so just be creative. And uh, that's how you could probably offset raising the real estate taxes so high with um, other programs. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And uh, I'm just going to take a side note here before we move on. We did hear from David Jones, and apparently he's having some serious technical problems. He's still going to try to rejoin us. And if he does, we will certainly try to accommodate him as, as much as we can with the time allotted. Um, and um, also in terms of the timing, you may still hear a, a bell go off. So if it does, don't, don't be alarmed and we'll try to just finish up whatever answer, you're, whatever answer you are, are in, in the midst of at that time. So now, without further ado, I'd like to move on and let James Cook answer this first question. Thanks for the question. This is a multi-part question. It's important to break this down into its individual components. Um, so the question perhaps is that, what do, how are we gonna pay for the stuff that we can't get grants and subsidized loans and that kind of thing for? Um, I just wanna preface this with, there's a ton of money out there. I, I do not think it's gonna be 50. I think it's going to be much more the other way. I think we're going to get the majority of the money from, you know, all these different uh, uh, organizations and programs that I mentioned before, especially with, um, you know, actually we're working with Vicki Pretty, uh, Vicki Prettyman, who I've worked with before in Vienna. She, she does a great job in getting these grants, getting these, um, these programs for rural priority funding areas. So I'm just going to preface this statement with that. Now, the next two pieces are uh, water and sewer rates and property taxes. Property taxes, I am pretty firmly against raising property taxes. I don't think that we need to do it. There's a couple of different reasons I'm against property tax, raising property tax, is because it disproportionately affects lower income and fixed income individuals because it raises the rates on homeowners and it raises the rates on uh, um, landlords. So really it has a disproportionate effect on the lower income individuals and I would never wanna make life harder on them. 
So that brings us to the rates, the rate question. Now this, I would be, I would consider raising rates if it does prove with the new water meters that we're installing, which is wonderful, we have an AMI system, which is very efficient. I love the AMI system. I would consider, uh, I would entertain raising rates because that is a much more proportional to use uh, assessment of what we actually do. So we can choose to use less water or more water depending on what we can afford. It's much more equitable to approach it that way. Not only that, but if we do have to fund some of these things, they should be isolated to the programs and services that we do provide. Um, and, and so some of these things that we can do are special assessment debt loads, which isolate the debt burden to specific um, uh, needs and, and provisions the town has for its specific services. And I would be more in favor of something like that as opposed to a general increase in property taxes. You get to finish your sentence. All right, thank you very much. You folks did fine time with the timers. Um, I would like to now, um, since we haven't had Dave, David Jones join us again yet, I'm going to move on to the second question. The second question, which was given to the candidates previously. And here is the second question. The hotel and lodging tax is collected by the county and a portion returned to the town annually. Currently, these tax dollars are placed in the, town, town, the town's general fund and used for a variety of budget items. Would you support setting up the town fund to receive these tax dollars and have all or part of them dedicated to tourism development? And this question, I'm going to. Uh... Lynn, if I could interrupt you. Uh, yeah, I didn't get up. I didn't. I, I see it now. I, I didn't give. I didn't get everybody a chance to answer that first question, did I? Okay. So I think I. Um, we're going back to the first question, and let me revisit that first question so we're clear on what we're doing. At least you will be clear on what you're doing. Here's that. I'm not right there. <laughs> the town of Rock Hall faces a complex budgeting process with limited funds to pay for its needed water, sewer, and other infrastructure improvements. What is your position on raising real estate taxes and utility rates to help pay for these? If opposed to this as a remedy, how would you propose paying for the improvements which cannot be financed through outside sourced grants? We have two candidates who've not yet been able to answer this question. I'm going to go next to Tim Edwards. Hey, thank you very much. Um, I'm against raising taxes unless we have no other choice. I think one of the things is we don't even know how much all this is going to cost. A lot of people are throwing numbers out there. They're not true. We have no idea how much this is going to cost on the people of this town. Most people are elderly. Most people are staying home with a fixed income. We've got to find a way, if we raise taxes, not to penalize people that don't have it to start with. Now, as far as the water, one of the problems we got is we're getting ready to do a a uh, brand new water meter project. So raising rates on that, we got to wait and see because we have no idea how much of a difference it is going to make when you put all brand new meters in this town because it will make a difference because you have older meters out there that don't register as good. So when you put new ones in, your water bills, some of them are going to go up. So all this is hanging <laughs> out here. We haven't done anything because we don't know what's going to happen. And that's the bad part about the whole thing. We could sit here and say, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But we're not going to do anything until we have some kind of concrete numbers. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Now we will, last but certainly not least, move on to Walter Elburn. 
Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. Time's up already. <laughs> I'm a ghost. Well, am I pictured now? Or okay, I'm on. You're good to go. You're good to go. Yeah. Um, I'm against praying. You know, raising taxes as well. There's other funds that we can have, and I'm in for small businesses and like that having the ability to have more events. And with the more events we have in town, that will create at least some type of income in a positive direction for the town, for the small businesses, and for it would help out if we had to took a piece of that for the infrastructure. The taxes we pay into the town, I mean, into the state, I think that we can go knock on the door or go, go find somewhere else to get this money for this. And the government seems like, on, and I'm sound kind of biased, but the Western Shore, we send our money there, it goes in one direction. And I'm not for that bridge to come over here, but it seems like they got enough money that they want to put one over here. They need to take care of our infrastructure mm -hmm. first. And with that, I can take the knowledge and part of what Timmy's saying, make a material list and have it submitted, say, per block or per road. This is something that I used to do at the World Bank. And in the process while I was at the World Bank, I've got these. These here are congressional awards for doing plumbing, piping, HVAC, <laughs> all the way up to the high rise buildings. Um, it's a very complex place over there. And this is a very complex place here. Different meters are different sizes. Some are three quarters, some are one inch. And we have to figure out how much is being used. And we're going to do this with the new water meters. All right. Well, thank you very, mis very much, Mr. Elburn. And I thank you all for your patience with the process here. And I would like to move now on to the second scheduled question. The hotel and lodging tax is collected by the county and a portion returned to the town annually. Currently, these tax dollars are placed in the town's general fund and used for a variety of budget items. Would you support setting up a town fund to receive these tax dollars and have all or part of them dedicated to tourism development? I'd like to start this round of questions with James Cook. Thank you for that question. It's a very important question. Um, and I, I would like to preface this answer with, I believe that the hotel tax that Kent County uh, takes from the hotel industry um, is actually allocated, it's supposed to be allocated for tourism. Um, but there are ways around that. Tourism is kind of a, a broad, it's tourism and development. So tourism and development just means, um, you know, things to support tourism. So I would argue that we should, until we really get our financial situation under control and have the ability to provide water and sewer to these potential tourists that we're going to, you know, talking about subsidizing and bringing in, if we can't provide them water and sewer, I don't think it makes sense to subsidize and advertising and get more people here that we can't actually support. We don't want to advertise and get people here and have dirty water. You know what I mean? That's not exactly a good look for the town. So I would argue that until we get that straight, until we can get our get our money, get our projects rolling, um, that that money should be used as much as possible to either uh, basic town functions or to service any kind of debt that we may need um, as far as, you know, bonds or any kind of small loans or subsidized loans or something like that. I would argue that that money is better used, pri you, know, prior you know, prioritize the important things. That money is better used for general town budget than it is for subsidizing tourism through a general fund. That may be something we can look at later, but at this point in time, that would not be a good move for the, the town to change how we currently allocate that money. Thank you very much, Mr. Cook. Uh, let's move this next question on to Tim Edwards. Well, the way I look at this is, is two different ways. Number one, if we are going to take it out of there, can we afford to take it out and break it down and put 
percentages on water, sewer, road, whatever, pumping stage, whatever it is. Can we afford to take it out of our budget? That's the first thing I look at. And I, that's all I have to say on that. Okay. Uh, we appreciate that. Now, Mr. Elburn, would you like to answer this question at this time? Yes, ma'am. And uh, I'm going to read. Could you reread that question for me? I certainly can. The hotel and lodging tax is collected by the county and a portion returned to the town annually. Currently, these tax dollars are placed in the town's general fund and used for a variety of budget items. Would you support setting up a town fund to receive these tax dollars and have all or part of them dedicated to tourism development? Part of them, part of them, because I mean, they need to be collected and utilized for this town. It's all right for the town to go ahead and pay these taxes out, but when it comes time for us to get some money back, it's just like a father giving a child an allowance. We need our allowance back and dad, we need it raised. And, you know, by having um, part of this dedicated to the tourism and part of it, you know, dedicated to the people, some type of fund should be set up so it can be separated in a proper manner and kept track of in a proper manner so we know if we are able to get these funds back, where are they exactly going to? So we keep on the right track and keep the money going in the straight direction. That's about it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Let's uh, move on to Dave Main to answer this question. Thank you. Um, I do feel we need, as a town, to work harder to market ourselves. We're a destination, we're at the end of the road. Uh, people don't pass through Rock Hall. Um, they, they, they're not coming to us to get to another location. If we stop marketing Rock Hall as a destination, then the town is going to gradually die. With no businesses and nothing vibrant out there, let's say it takes five years to fix the infrastructure. In five years, the vibrancy of Main Street will be gone. Um, I'd like to see a budgetary line item and perhaps a position responsible for marketing the town and the environment we have to offer those for events, uh, as well as the calm natural beauty that surrounds us. The same position could probably be an excellent resource responsible for enhancing the public relations with our town council and our local uh, constituents. Um, maybe more frequent updates, such as a written publication, a periodic town crier, um, as well as perform marketing that is so necessary for our economic survival as a whole. All thank right, you. and fine, thank you. And finally, um, I'd like to give Brian Jones a chance to answer this question. Yeah, so the lodging tax dollars, um, they currently go into the general fund uh, for the town. And um, right now, the general fund is set up with an actual line item called tourism. Um, and we outlined in, in that line item exactly what parts part of the funding is used for. And I, I think the, some of it is used for uh, the Greater Rock Hall Business Association donation, the town website, uh, Fourth of July activities and other tourism related items. If we're gonna take that funding out of the general fund and put it into its own separate fund, then we're gonna to have to uh, supplement that revenue um, somehow and put that revenue back into the general fund. Um, the town has a complicated and complex uh, budget process. Throughout the year, our revenue comes from multiple sources. So uh, you have to budget very carefully and um, so if we're going to take that funding out, then we have to supplement it with some other income. I will say that if we don't promote Rock Hall and uh, have it as a tourist destination, our businesses will suffer. And if you look around town, our businesses consist of, um, you know, family owned businesses. There's only four or five chain store names um, businesses in the town. So if we don't support them, they're the ones we call on if there's, you know, if, if there's a fundraiser in the community, um, if there's a natural disaster. Um, I've seen the business community step up 
and we need to support them, encourage them, provide them with resources. Town government needs to uh, provide them with resources um, and continue to support them and promote the town. Tourism is very important. That's all I got to say. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, we have answered and given you each a chance to uh, provide your answers for these two questions that you received previously. We, I do see that we have some time now to um, answer some questions, give you the opportunity to answer some questions that have been uh, provided by folks in the audience or in the local community. The first question that I'm going to read and- Madam and moderator. You know, I, I think James yes. had a I think James had a comment. If you don't mind, I, I wanted to make just a quick statement. I had 45 seconds left on my answer, I believe. If I can use just a few seconds to clarify some maybe some okay. ways to think about, would that be okay? Well, we, we don't really provide an opportunity for rebuttals, and if I do it for you, then That's I got to do it for everybody. So I apologize for for that, um, and I you know like to hear that. But perhaps you'll have an opportunity to express it in one of these other questions that has come up. Sounds good, thank you. Um, talking, I think, that you know, kind of a segue to uh, the tour issue of tourism, one of the questions that was presented to us is, the trams and trolleys, which have been operated in Rock Hall in the past, have been primarily used by visitors, not residents. Do you believe the operation and maintenance of these should be continued, and if so, should town taxes pay for this, or should the transportation be made, be made self-sufficient? And each one of you will, again, have two minutes to answer this question. I will start, and if you don't want to, you don't have to provide an answer on a question. If you want to pass, you can pass. Okay, but I'm going to at least give each one of you the opportunity to answer the question. I'll start with Tim Edwards on this one. <clears throat> Well, one of the things about the trolleys that really hurt the town was it cost us over $100,000 in maintenance over those time, over that period. That hurt. That was on taxpayers' dollars. So if we're going to fund them, we've got to figure out a better way because the taxpayers cannot sit here and fund something like that for over $100,000 because we ain't got that kind of money. Now, what did help was we raised the rate. And I think, and I'm going back by memory here, I think that we did break even the last year that they ran. But we cannot keep letting the taxpayers pay that kind of money. They don't, we don't have it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Elburn, would you like to respond to this question? Well, I'll be honest with you, I, I used to take the trolley and it would be nice that the town could have the trolley back, but if the cost means, as Timmy says, $100,000, I think public transportation could be shopped out. In other words, offer other companies such as, you know, like the key line cab, cab to bring in their own so that they carry the maintenance and they carry the insurance themselves rather than have the town do that. Public transportation would be nice, but at what cost? $100,000 and then that's just plus. And then if somebody falls off the trolley and gets hurt, then the town may be liable for some type of lawsuit there, which you wouldn't stay away from. And um, I believe that it could be shopped out. And it would be a good small business for somebody around here if they wanted to take it upon themselves to to do it because they would be supporting themselves being a small business and supporting the other local small businesses around town even if they was just to give them a ride around just to stop here and there and get to know our town a little bit better but transportation would be nice in this town if it could be done in an affordable manner that's Thank you very much. On that one. Mr. Main, would you like to respond? Sure. Um, I, again, have, I've talked to a lot of people about this. I've given a lot of thought. 
and it's a very controversial issue within the town. Um, trams are tough because we, as Timmy said, um, rightfully so, we lost a lot of money on those trams. Um, there has to be a way to make them profitable. Um, we can't afford those financial losses. Uh, the businesses are the ones who profit from those trams um, and the taxpayers should not be sub directly subsidizing those businesses in that fashion. If we could come up with some sort of a shared burden where the town was guaranteed to get their funds back at the end of the year or something along those lines, I think there are mechanisms we can investigate to make that a, a doable venture. Uh, another thing that, I, that I've thought about was uh, if a small business owner wanted to start a small pedicab business um, where they take two or three people in a pedicab and, and give summer and college students or high schoolers a mechanism to start a business and pedal people around from the between the marinas and, and downtown. I think there are there are other options there, but I cannot in good conscience say the town can bear the burden. Thanks. Thank you. Brian Jones, would you like to respond to this question? Yeah, the trams were an investment to the town, if you think of it uh, that way, because the businesses really um, capitalized off of the trams and public transportation. I do believe that Rock Hall needs public transportation, whether we do that with an outside contractor or whether we come up with a creative solution to uh, fund public transportation through the town. Uh, either way we go, uh, we need public transportation. Um, so th that's that's really all I have to say about it. Okay, um, thank you. Um, James Cook, would you like to respond to this question? I would, thank you. So the trans, just because of the figure that was 100 or $120,000 is cost to uh, us, a small town, is pretty high for something like that. I do believe that these types of services, again, in line with my comments about the, uh, the, the water and sewer, they should at least break even. If we are gonna venture to do something or uh, provide a service, especially if it benefits, there's a great point that David made that if it benefits one group as opposed to another group and it's subsidized by another group, that's simply not fair. So if the town can operate this at, at least a break even, if not a revenue source, we do need revenue sources and we do need revenue sources sources that don't burden, um, especially fixed income and low income individuals, which it would be if it was funded out of something like property taxes. So if we can find a way to at least operate a break, break even, I'll be very comfortable with that. Contracting it out is another option, but either way, the burden should not be on the local people to subsidize certain groups, whether it be people from out of town or certain businesses. Now, um, I do want to take this opportunity to, to extend my previous comment tied into this one about tourism. I am generally against using town funds to subsidize tourism until we get a lot of our infrastructure uh, you know, up to code and up, up to date. Now that doesn't mean I'm against tourism. I think tourism is extremely important for the town. And I do think, and I do know that the majority of tourism advertisement and the draw from you know, outside of the town to the town is done wonderfully by the businesses. The marinas do most of the heavy lifting for this. So it's not that if the town doesn't do it, it's not going to get done. It's just how much do we have available to give to these industries? So I, I, it's, I'm pro-tourism, but I also think the businesses have the biggest stake in it and do a wonderful job at bringing tourists in to help these businesses, help our local businesses grow. Thank you. Um, I would like, we, we have some time for a, another couple questions. So I'm going to move on to a, a, another question that we receive. And again, you will all have an opportunity to answer this question. I'm gonna start this, um, this question, this round with Brian Jones. The First Amendment rights are important. However, there is a profanity-laced flag on Mercer Avenue directed, directed at currently elected officials. If elected, would you support a resolution condemning this flag and asking for its removal? Um, I feel I don't have enough information to answer that question appropriately. Oh, okay, that's, that's, fine. that's just fine. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, um, the next person I'd like to give a chance to answer that 
question is James Cook. I'm going to second some of what Brian's sentiments are. I'm not aware of what this is exactly. Um, I think it's generally speaking, I am very pro individuals doing what they see fit with their property. And as long as it's not creating a significant impact to their neighbors, whether it be safety, health, or otherwise property value, I feel that people should be able to express themselves how they deem fit. I think that's very, very important. Um, and so without having any further knowledge, I'm not sure how to address it. Now, if it is something that's extremely profane or something that is, uh, you know, essentially degrading our community, that would be something maybe I would just go ask the individual, hey, I, I generally don't like to get government involved unless we, if we can approach this individual and just reason with the person, I think that's the best approach. We're all neighbors. We're a small community. There's no reason why we can't talk to each other instead of bringing it up before the town council and passing resolutions and that kind of thing. I would just go knock on, the, on whoever it was door and see if we could work something else. Like, I feel like maybe you've given the town a bad reputation. Do you think maybe we can talk about this? That would be my approach. I generally wouldn't want to pass any resolution or legal thing unless it was absolutely necessary. Um, Tim Edwards, do you want to you want to answer this question or respond to this question? Oh, I'll try. Um, one of the things is when this come out, the first place it ended up was to the lawyer, and that's when the First Amendment rights come out. Now, wouldn't this be better if I mean we sent it? We had to send it to the lawyer. I'm sorry, but. Wouldn't this be better if we sent this to like an ethics committee for them to get a, some kind of ruling and then bring it back to us? Because it, what ends up happening is you have a domino effect. This one does it, that one does it, and then it's on down the line. I don't know how I feel about it one way or the other. I mean, it, it upsets people when, you know, you bash their president, and I understand that, but the amount of money that cost the town, and I still ain't got the figure on it, but I'll, I'll find it out, was astronomical just to deal with that issue because you had the town manager, you had the chief of police, you had the lawyer, and anybody knows when you're on the council, if you ask the lawyer a question, it's cha-ching, and it ain't cheap. So I, I would try to send that to the ethics committee to see what I could get out of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Um, Mr. Elburn, would you like to respond to this? Question? Yes, ma'am. I've, I've never seen what it is on Mercer Avenue, but I feel like if it's offensive to anybody, then yeah, it should be addressed. And I met an ethics committee would not be a bad idea, and if so, I'd be glad to be on one. I mean, I serve, I'd, I'd like to serve my town, but in, at the same rate, if that needs to be addressed over a flag, that's a DD-214, three <laughs> tours of duty. I'll be glad to go serve the paper. And that's what I can, I like to say about that. Okay, we appreciate that. Um, Mr. Maine, would you like to respond to this question? Absolutely. Um, first, First Amendment only says what the government can stop you from, what the government can prohibit you from doing and what they can do to you <coughs> does not preclude them from setting boundaries and guidelines. There are guidelines for license plates. There are guidelines for signage. There are guidelines for billboards. The profanity is not to be expressed. I haven't actually seen this sign. If it only says, you know, down with Biden or down with Trump or, you know, down with Dave Maine, that's not <laughs> profanity. But if it if it actually has profane language scripted out there, one, it, it, children and tourists should not be exposed to that. And there are guidelines and codes already in place to help deal with that in other areas that we should be able to adopt and codify. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we have we do have time for another question. We're going to change the subject a little bit here. This is about our demographics in our town and what we can do for our residents. Reported demographics show that the average age of town residents is increasing, 
as longtime residents grow older and others retire here. They also showed that younger families with children are moving away. First part of this question is, what can be done to provide ser more services for seniors? And the second part of this question is, what can be offered to the children of Rock Hall beyond the playgrounds that we have and the, this few spe special events that we hold each year? i um, like to start this question with uh, Mr. Elburn. I knew it's coming. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'm a good one to start with because I was literally born and raised right here on Cottage Avenue. And in my time, there have been so many different things taken away from the children that they have no places to go. We used to go play ball in the school lots, play ball civic center up to the lagoon all that kind of stuff you just can't do anymore for different you know insurance reasons but i the things that the kids need is something to do and to get them out of the house something worthwhile for them to get out of the house work for them to do other than sit behind playing video games and the old older people i'm getting there myself and <laughs> We look out for the neighbors in in because I live on Haven Road, but we look out for our neighbors there and as such on Cottage Avenue where I own property. And if you can just do something good for one person each day, that would be good. And especially if it's for your neighbors and for the elderly. You know, there was a time too, like with the younger kids, something happened, you could go up to anybody's door. And they tell you, come on in. You go up to somebody's door now and your lot will be turned away unpleasantly. So I think that we need to look out. We need to look out for the elderly and we need to find things to do for the children. I've got six children of my own and only two of which work in this town. One full time, one uh, works part time here and she works in another place. But they have seek the point of employment in other directions because of the lack of employment and the lack of benefits and lack of pay here. You know, you go to work at a restaurant here or a business here, you might get minimum wage or less. Thank you. Thank you. That's the time's up. <laughs> um, Mr. Maine, would you like to respond to this? question. Sure, thank you. Um, this is a multi-pronged question, um, very difficult to deal with. Some of that comes back to dollars, which again, we are in significant constraints with. Um, we still support the senior center. We still support a nice playground, or excuse me, the civic center, not the senior center, um, a nice playground. Uh, the ballpark is still there. Um, I've seen kids out there flying kites and playing in the ballpark. I didn't realize there was any kind of an issue with that. Um, I see this as need, we need more families in this town. And part of keeping the families here is providing places for people to transition into work. As Mr. Cook was saying earlier, the, it's important that we start providing training and career direction for our younger people so that we don't keep losing them and change the demographics so that it's strictly a retirement community. I know at one point in time, there was discussion around a, a Marine Works educational facility and that did not go over very well. We need to look, take a long, hard look at what our goals are as a town and start trying to figure out how we can provide those opportunities for our younger people. Senior people, we need to look at those services as because our demographic is already there, but that's a dollars and cents issue. Uh, and I think the voters in the town need to have decisions based around how we spend those dollars. Thanks. Well, thank you, Mr. Maine. Uh, Brian Jones, would you like to respond to this question? Um, yeah, I think we do a lot in the community um, as it relates to um, the senior citizens, um, you know, holding special events, 
Um, I know our American Legion, you know, they, they hold and host bingo and, and events like that. Um, but as far as getting them resources uh, for things that they need, uh, working with the local government um, and the state and, and bringing those resources for that type of um, help. But as far as our children, um, this is where marketing the town uh, comes in, uh, marketing our schools. We have one of the best elementary schools in Kent County um, and one of the best you know, staff principal. Um, and they work hard to promote Rock Hall Elementary. Um, we have you know, after school programs. Um, so marketing the town to young families, marketing our schools, because that's important. Um, is a way to go to try to promote uh, young people to move here. Um, and, uh, you know, just maintaining our parks and recreation. I do believe we have some of the best playgrounds, um, thanks to grant funding that we received in the past years. Uh, we try to maintain our ball fields as much as we can. Um, and employment is uh, an issue, um, retaining young people for employment. That's, that's always an issue. Um, but, and, and also our churches, you know, let's get, uh, let's get our, you know, children involved in the churches, um, and also our community members. So, um, there's a lot that goes on in Rock Hall and I'm proud of it. Um, I've lived here all my life and, um, we are seeing an increase in working remotely. So maybe that will help us retain, uh, younger families, bring them in, uh, purchase houses, property in Rock Hall, and they can work remotely. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, we have now, um, I'd like to give uh, James Cook an opportunity to answer this question. Thanks for the opportunity to answer this question. Now this question is someone in my wheelhouse, wheelhouse because I am a young professional in Rock Hall. So I, I can speak to a little bit of what people my age would be looking for to keep us here. And I, I love this area, but it's not particularly easy. You know, I drive an hour plus every day one way to work and then come back here just because I love the town so much. Um, so, again, as uh, David Main mentioned, this is a multi-pronged question. Um, I do think that we, we have a great, uh, we have a great uh, ball field. We have a great um, uh, park. I play basketball at the park all the time. I love it. Um, it's a beautiful park. Um, so a lot of those things, anything we can find with grants, I'm, I'm all for it. We don't have a ton of money to allocate to a lot of these things, but I think that's really where the community can step up and does step up. Uh, you know, for example, things, you know, community networks, checking on people, um, Meals on Wheels has done a great job in Kent County. Um, I, I live right down the street from, uh, from, from um, where, they, where they're playing bingo all the time, which is great. The Legion is wonderful. It's a great gathering place. So we do have a lot of things here. But I do think that the community can, should, and does step up to meet a lot of these needs. Now, as far as, you know, keeping the, the kids and the, and the families here, it's not really about building more parks. You know, it's about keeping, you know, making this a place where people want to raise their kids as far as is there work? You know, how long am I going to have to travel to, to work? What are the property values? What are the prices that I have to pay to live here? That's a multifaceted thing. So that's why I was talking about property taxes. We don't want to raise property taxes to drive off young professionals who maybe haven't hit the peak of their career and making a little bit more money they can afford to, you know, pay a little bit higher prices. We want to, you know, encourage um, small businesses. Like, uh, you know, Rich and Nina down the street uh, with uh, Fresh Start. That's wonderful. We need people like that. We need entrepreneurs. We need young people. We need to promote businesses. And we can also, I teach at Chesapeake College, and they have a wonderful skilled trades program there. Um, if we can partner with them to either teach teleclasses or, or just promote and funnel our, our young people there and get them trained into good paying jobs, I think that would be an asset to this Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and... And finally, I'd like to give Kim Edwards an opportunity to respond to this question. Well, if any of you are up around 4.35 o'clock in the morning in this town, which a lot of people are, you can set up the road and watch just how many people leave this town to go to work. We only have so many jobs down here. I think we need to figure out a way to get some kind of industry down here where we can put people to work so they'll stay here. If they stay here, they spend more money, which means we get more tax dollars. But we've got to figure out, because nobody's done it in a long while, how to get something here for people to work. If you don't work at a marina or you don't work at a restaurant or a store, 
there's nothing pretty much else unless you work on the water. We've got to figure out how to bring something, just something down here that would help with keeping people here. That's what I said about that. But I want to touch about the elderly people. There's a lot of ways that we can bring in different, um, like the health department, that type of stuff in, and get the elderly people the programs that they need. Because some people don't need, have the programs they need. Some can't even pay for the medicine. I've witnessed that myself. So there's a lot of different ways we can do this, but it takes a lot of work to do it. And it takes a lot of people to get it done. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we have time for one more question. I'm gonna switch gears here. And this one is about the Rock Hall Police Department. And here's the question and I'm going to um, give this one first to Mr. Maine. Do you support increasing the size of the police department as needs have now dictated or should the town outsource its public safety needs to the county sheriff's office, as has been done by other municipalities in Kent County? I uh, want to be very clear. I do not agree with outsourcing our town's police work to other municipalities. Uh, our officers know the town. They know most of the people for that matter. Uh, they understand our demographic, they understand our lifestyles, they understand our needs. Um, I am supportive of increasing the town's police force. However, once again, any kind of an increase comes on the back of the taxpayer. We have to figure out if we want to fund these things, how we fund them. I do not believe that the sheriff and the stadies that come into town do us a service. Uh, if anything, they do us a disservice. They discourage tourism um, just through stopping people who are going a few miles over the speed limit, things like that. Their, their mere presence deters tourism. We need to keep it in town. Thanks. Well, thank you. Uh, Brian Jones, would you like to respond to this question? Yeah, I support the town's police force as it is now. Um, I'd have to speak with, you know, Captain or Chief Dempsey um, and see how he's making out with the staff that he has. Um, when I was mayor, he seemed to be working well with the staff that he had um, and informed the council on numerous occasions that he didn't feel an increase in the officers would, um, would be needed. So I'd have to obviously ask those questions um, and see what kind of answers we get before we move forward. But as far as having the local sheriff's department and the state police, I support them. Uh, having them right outside of town limits when we don't have an officer on duty is very um, convenient and also uh, refreshing to know that our public safety doesn't go uh, without having at least an officer in the vicinity. Um, so I support all law enforcement. I, I support their efforts. Um, and uh, as far as adding police officers, like I said, that would be, you know, we have to have that discussion. Um, if that's something that the police chief uh, seems to feel that he needs, then obviously a discussion will pursue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. James Cook, would you like to respond to this question? Absolutely. Um, so as far as increasing or changing the size or structure of the police department, I am not particularly aware that there is an immediate need. If there is, I, absolutely, we should look at it. Um, as far as contracting it out to outside services or the Kent County Sheriff, I am very opposed to doing that. Um, I, I firmly agree with David Main's sentiment that um, our officers know our community. I am very in favor of local policing, um, if people who really know the community and know how to interact with them, know what's important, what's who, you know, what to enforce, when to enforce, how to talk to these people because they know them on a first name basis. That is key, especially in a small community. We should take advantage of that. We should not act like larger communities that don't have that luxury. We should take full advantage of that luxury. Um, and I, I do very much love the small town community policing that we do have. But if they do need extra assistance or help, 
then absolutely we should look at, at whatever we can do to help. All right, thank you very much. Um, Tim Edwards, would you like to respond to this question? Well, Chief Dempsey, if he wanted another officer would have come to us, and I think that he's on that verge of coming to us for one. Um, one of the things is when we don't have coverage, the county slides in, yes, they do. When we ran the first time and we did this forum, there was 13 questions about the police department. They had to shut it off. That's how interesting that was. But I know that they can't work a full clock the way they are. So it all comes down to do you want 24-hour coverage or don't you? And that's up to him. He has to come to us and ask for that, which I'm pretty sure he will. And I'm all for it because you don't even know the police departments anymore like you used to. So I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, Mr. Alburn, would you like to respond to this question? Yes, ma'am. Um, we tried that before where the outside police came in here. And with the highest police force when it was tried, it really didn't go too well between the, with the community and the, and the police first. Now, they all had respect for each other, but it came down to the, the community, got tired of the outside um, help, meaning the sheriff's department and, and the um, state police coming in and trying to police their town. It is good that they are on call just around the county and not far away. And without getting Chief Dempsey involved, and I think he should have a, all, this, you know, I think he should have say in the matter because he knows exactly what would be required, especially on certain days we got events. But as for hiring another individual at this time, no. We've always had the sheriff's department and the state police not far out of call range if we really needed it. And Chief Dempsey would know that. And, but if they're pulling, being pulled thin and they're having to do overtime, then the overtime would be something that the town would be having to pay. And if they're on salary, then they're putting in more 40s, more than 40 hours than what legally supposed to be done is they, that they're supposed to be paid for task hours if they are putting in more than 40 hours themselves. And then that would go towards the effect of, do you really need more on, to hire another police officer in the, co in, the, in the town of Rock Hall? That would be something that had to be determined on like Chief Dempsey and our greater needs. We've already got something worked out with the state police and the, and the sheriff's department. Right, that happened years ago. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, I think with the time allotted that we have, we're going to move on to closing arguments. Closing arguments, excuse me, closing statements. <laughs> and I want to give each one of the candidates remaining um, to respond um, with their own closing statements. I uh, apologize again that we lost um, David Jones and we're not able to hear from him tonight, but you gentlemen did a fine job. And I, at this time, like to start the closing statements with James Cook. First of all, thank you to the League of Women Voters of Kent County for hosting this debate. I think it's enormously important to allow informed voting and I'm really glad that we can speak directly to the, the residents of Rock Hall. I've tried to make a personal effort to go to every door I possibly can. I think I'm about 60% of the way there. And so if I haven't seen you yet, I should be coming to you sometime this week because I do want to see and talk to everybody I possibly can. Um, but my, my pitch here is that a combination of my professional experience being that I deal with small towns every day and I'm able to help them take their, take their projects from identifying the problem to funding, to project management, to completion. I've worked with Vicki Prigger Prettyman before from CERCAP. I've worked with uh, USDA. Uh, Terry Ferens heads up our, our local um, uh, USDA branch. And she's out of Dover. I, I have personal connections with these people, and I want to use those personal connections 
for Rock Hall, because I live here and because I care, because I think I can really contribute to the overall success of our uh, infrastructure um, and any future projects that we have going forward. Uh, and I believe I can work with other members of the council, whatever the, the outcome of the election is. I believe I can work with the mayor. I believe that, um, you know, I represent a, a good uh, uh, example of a young professional in Rock Hall that I can give that perspective to the council when we're considering decisions about whether to whether to annex or allow certain businesses or promote certain businesses or fund this or fund that. I believe I bring that perspective, which I think is a really important perspective if you want to keep this town vibrant. It's already been mentioned that our, our population is aging and we really do need to make sure our, our, our town doesn't die eventually because you know we end up driving off a lot of the young people. So I believe in my experience, I believe that my connections and I believe that my age, frankly, are a huge benefit to the town. It should be a voice on the council. And I hope to, if I haven't seen you already this week, I should be knocking on your door soon. So I hope to meet some more uh, people that I haven't met yet. So thank you again. Well done. Right. We will um, move on now to um, closing statements from Tim Edwards. Well, we beat the uh, infrastructure to death, but we do have other problems. I honestly think you can take it all, put it in a paper bag, whatever you pull out is a major issue. That's where we're at. So it doesn't matter what the issue is. One person can't solve it. It takes the whole council. That's one of the things that I learned. I worked there for 30 years. When I got on the council, I was like, holy crap. I thought I knew what went on until I got on there. And then I learned a lot. And we got our finances straight somewhat. We are way ahead of where we were. We are trying to fix this infrastructure, but it just takes time. You can't walk up there and, and screw on a light bulb and be done. One of the things I would like to ask everybody out there is please vote. Whether you vote for me, whether you vote for somebody else, I don't care. Please vote. It's very important. It's going to be very important on your tax rate, your war rate. It's going to be very important on all of them. Thank you. Mr. Edwards, are you finished? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Alburn, would you like to offer your closing statement? Yes, ma'am. You know, as you know, with my background, I, I had one there that I did three tours of duty while I was in the Marine Corps. I worked when I was in D.C. as a superintendent for, for 10 years. I had 65 people under me directly, and I did everything from the White House compound to the U.S. Capitol building, plus the World Bank State Department. I go right on down the list. The part about that is the knowledge that the town would already have. The water plants that is down here, I used to put them in. And as Timmy said, beating up the infrastructure is one thing, but we've got other issues, such as the small businesses, the tourism that, you know, we need to have in a positive way for this town, looking after our old people, looking after our young people, and avoiding any taxes that we can possibly avoid. You're looking for this money for other places, go knock on the governor's door. And I've said in the meetings before with Congress, that's how I end up with two congressional awards, just having to put pipe in. So it wouldn't be my first go around having to deal with, with something of that nature. I was born and raised in this town and it was primary of Waterman's town. Now we have to move with the times and seek out things, the small businesses and the, and the tourism Without the taxation, if we have any money that's paid out, we need to find out how to get it back because it's out there somewhere and we just got to go ask for our allowance back. We need it. We give it. We pay it. Now it's time for us to get it back. So I hope that you all uh, please vote. And I'm very glad to attend your meeting and I thank you very much for the invite and I wish all everybody well and Good luck to y'all, and thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Elburn. We'd like to hear from uh, 
David Maine. Thank you. First, I want to uh, I want to make sure I take the moment to thank the League of Women Voters and the Rock Hall Business Association for putting this together. I know it's a little bit of a challenge given the environment that we're all functioning in. Um, and I think this has been a pretty useful forum. I hope enough people have logged in to actually get to spend time with the candidates. Uh, that being said, I want to remind everyone who is listening, the town works for you. The council works for you. Those of us who are sitting here want to work for you. Um, the current administration has worked really hard to reestablish integrity and respect. Uh, I think one of the places we can still move forward on is better communication with the town townspeople as a whole. I touched on that a little bit in one of my answers. I think that's really important. I think there's a lot of people in this town who really don't know everything that's going on or when it's what's happening, when it's happening, what the costs are and what the potential impacts are. I, I think we truly need to work on moving forward with better lines of communication. And as Mr. Edwards said, please vote. It's important. It's really important to all of us. Thanks. Thank you. Brian Jones, would you like to offer your closing? Thank yes, you. I too would like to thank the uh, Greater Rock Hall Business Association and the League of Women Voters for uh, hosting this forum. I think it's been a positive uh, process and uh, just uh, thank you for that. Um, my time as an elected official, I do believe that um, I had many successes along with my past administration. Uh, we became a sustainable community, allowing us to uh, get grant funding from the state. We were the first Maryland affiliate, Main Street. Uh, we implemented the Rock Hall Against Drugs program. We established a working waterfront committee to address waterfront issues. Um, and we also implemented the community notification system, which is being utilized um, very frequently in the town. So thank you for that. Um, and also, as far as addressing infrastructure, we replaced the water main on Catholic Avenue. That was a huge project. We've replaced pumps throughout the years. Um, we installed a new clarifier at the water treatment plant. Um, and we worked with CERCAP during, uh, towards the end of my term. Um, so we did have some great successes and I'm very proud of what uh, myself and the previous administration accomplished. Um, if elected to the town council again, I vow to continue to address and tackle important issues um, such as supporting our revitalization efforts, uh, maintaining positive relationships with uh, community businesses and organizations, uh, the economy, creating jobs, public transportation. We talked about all of this stuff tonight, strengthening the infrastructure, maintaining our roads, um, improving the quality of life, protecting our heritage, and creating more recreational opportunities and working towards financial stability. I am playing it safe, so I'm not going door to door, uh, but I do have an email um, set up. So if anyone would like to uh, ask me any questions, um, it's jones for towncouncil at gmail.com. Um, I have a strong admiration for my community and hope that you will consider electing me to the town council on May 1st. Thank you. Thank you. Um, myself a little bit confused with the process with the, with the process here james cook have you had a chance to do your closing statement yet i have thank you okay um tim edwards yes ma'am did you, you did his closing statement and walter yes, elburn you did closing statement. yes ma'am did i miss anybody okay <laughs> i appreciate your patience with that um now that we are at the end of our evening, um, I would like to sincerely, uh, on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Kent County, I'd like to sincerely thank these candidates for not only their thoughtful contributions to the evening, but their patience with the process. It's, it's new for all of us and you did a fine job. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I also want to thank everybody in the community who participated. We, I see we've had, we, have a, we had a good number of participants um, on the screen, and we hope that it was worth your effort to stay tuned tonight. If you or anybody you know that couldn't, partic couldn't participate tonight wants to see the proceedings from this evening, they will be posted on the League of Women Voters Facebook page. And finally, 
as I will join it with all with the other candidates who have said this, we certainly hope that you will exercise your right and privilege to vote and vote in the election on Saturday, May 1st. Thank you again for your time.